Hello, and welcome to another Website Depot podcast. As ever, I'm your host, Greg Benevent, and once again, I am lucky to be joined by Noel Dombrowski. How you doing there, Noel? I'm doing pretty good today, Greg. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I, uh, you know, it's 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 for those of you listening or watching at home. If you hear me make congested noises with my nose, uh, it might just be that there's so many of them they can't be edited out. The allergies or something, as you can tell by the perpetual sunset there behind me. It, um, but yeah, it's it's so other than that, no, I'm good. We've got Christmas in a week or so, so it's going to be good. But it, uh, speaking of, you know, things you can do and ways to improve your business, I know you were talking about last time. You said so many great things about what folks can do with their YouTube and how to make that more conducive to their business. And I know talking to you that somehow, despite the fact that felt exhausted, exhaustive, and I felt like I could go start a YouTube empire after talking to you last time. I know you said that you had more. Uh, uh, even more advice to share with us. Absolutely. Yeah, YouTube is one of those things that is, it's just so massive that it is really hard to, to sometimes get kind of a comprehensive view of all of the opportunities that you have and all the tools that are available to you. Um, mm -hmm. So while I think the last time was a great, like is that exhaustive kind of overview, uh, <laughs> I thought we could touch on today or maybe like a few things that um, maybe either don't come to mind right away or if you're just getting into YouTube, these are certain settings that you don't look quite know how to utilize oh, um, sure. but there are a couple hidden gems that might not be uh, totally apparent right off the bat um, that can help uh, your video performance in terms of SEO and, and being discovered and all that okay cool 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 yes um, so the first thing is kind of a rather than a do it's a don't do <laughs> <laughs> I think I might have touched on this a little bit in the last podcast but um, something that trips up a lot of people is uh, it, in the last, I believe the last year, there's a new setting for YouTube videos where you have to declare your audience. Um, oh. and so for those of us who are trying to, you know, we're, we're in YouTube for the SEO, for the discovery, and for that data collection, um, this is something that's very important. So if you don't read into it, at first glance, you know, you think about your video and, and what you have to declare is, you know, is your video made for kids or not made for kids? Uh -huh. And you know, if you have a family-friendly video, what a lot of people get tripped up on is they see that and, you know, it seems like such an aggressive thing to say, my video is not made for kids. <laughs> but <laughs> what you're declaring is um, your target audience. So a lot of people check, oh, this is made for kids because they think, oh, if I say no, it's going to end up in that restricted section of YouTube that's like 18 and over. But that's not the case. Mm. So if nothing else, mm. this, this one first lesson can be kind of a PSA. I believe it's the FCC, but there in the last year there has been a, a protections act uh, passed and uh, that YouTube ascribes to in terms of uh, you know the access children have to certain parts of the platform and and mm. uh, the thing is is that you can't collect data from children. So oh, okay. if you've that's marked a off a video as yeah, well because you know especially that's what you're doing here is you're saying you're declaring here you know this content was created with you know six or seven year olds in mind rather right. than saying this is family friendly it seems counterintuitive mm -hmm. but if something's family friendly you still but it's not targeted for children you want to mark not mm -hmm. made for kids um the other thing that happens too is you lose not only do you lose that uh collection the analytics and the data that you would use to say okay who likes this video how much are they watching you know how long are people watching you lose all of that which is i think really key to seeing what's performing and what's not um, mm. But it also limits your ability to be, it, your video can't be put on other playlists, you can't, uh, it can't be monetized, it can't, you can't have comments because what you're saying is this is a children's program and it will be suggested along with other children's content. So nothing else, I think that's the number one thing to keep in mind, one of those little hidden settings that people don't always understand right off the bat. Oh, for sure. And that and that's particularly something, no, and that makes so much sense. I'm so glad you brought that up because it's, it's you know, I think about, you know, things we've companies we've worked with and such where it's you know there are where like you know someone's selling upholstery supplies absolutely that video is going to have nothing untoward or risque or violent the child could absolutely watch it but ch children are also not building couches like they yeah. don't need the tarp they don't need those things so it's it's a question of who you know maybe a, a, when you see that question as a business owner you know rephrase it in your mind it's not is this safe for kids to watch it's who do i want to see this that is precisely the best the best way to put it yeah who do you want it in front of <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That in that uh, 
to kind of jump off of that, um, thinking about how, you know, if you do that, you can't add things to playlists. Um, mm-hmm. Something I kind of, the, the Bible I thumped in the last podcast a lot was how important playlists are. Certainly. Um, but what I think a lot of people overlook is, um, or they don't know right, right off the bat, is the second that you start curating a playlist, um, mm-hmm. you're kind of giving more information to YouTube. And what you're doing is you're building mm-hmm. out, um, you're, you're building out your suggested videos. Mm. So a good example is if you look at our podcasts, actually, it's oh. a great example. So oh. what, what you're telling YouTube and having all this similar content together is, you know, they always want to serve the viewer and right. they want to do, you know, the, I don't want to say the least amount of work, but the more you can kind of feed them so that their job is easier, the more they will take advantage of that. Makes um, sense. So you're building, if you have the podcast, you have a whole podcast playlist, what you'll notice uh, is if you go to our channel and you click one of our podcasts, if you look to the right, the top three suggested videos next to it will all be off of that playlist from the Daily Digital and perhaps oh. one from the channel. Okay. And, and and just from going off of my own YouTube experience as a viewer and as a consumer, if I'm watching something that doesn't come that isn't attached to such a playlist, it's so much more likely for those suggestions, particularly the top ones to be something else entirely, some other, it's not something dissimilar, but something from a different company, a different entity, someone maybe it's a little bit bigger, maybe put a few more bucks into the ads or whatever. But what you're saying is when you put it in that playlist, then it's far more likely that 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 that, that you'll be that next suggestion, that you'll be the auto, uh, 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 you know, the next thing YouTube takes the viewer to. Absolutely. Yeah. And we're also, I mean, as consumers, we're, we're lazy and, you know, people don't like to have to scroll through that whole sidebar to find oh, what no, they no. want. So uh, if you're right yeah. there and they don't have to do the extra work, then, uh, you know, you're, you're, you have more control over where you're kind of channeling people to drive mm. the views. And so um, that's very valuable and getting really strategic with that can be very valuable. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. That, that's great. That makes so much sense. It, uh, that right, and that's that's something. Yeah, and that's something. Even and it's even something on top of that. Is it gets back to something you've said before in this about you know keep putting content out there. I mean, it's it's if you know if you only have one or two things, well, then that you know this daisy chain that we're talking about of you know the viewer going to the going through the rest of your playlist. Eventually, it's going to get to you know a competitor, someone else in your industry, or something else. But the more of those things you have there, the more likely that you're going to be that thing that keeps showing up next. Absolutely, yeah. And I think another thing we talked about on the last podcast was if you don't have a whole ton of content, something you can do. And you know, not everyone is lucky enough to have this exposure. But if you, you know, let's say you've been uh, Arizona Sun is a great example. They have a couple of videos. Um, they've also been featured on the news, or you know, there are people who have liked their product. So you know, if you have a playlist, you don't necessarily have all the stuff to pack it. If you can still put those related videos in, a, it looks really good on your page. B, mm. it bets you. YouTube says, all right, other people think this topic is valuable and important, so we're going to prioritize it um, because not just these people are saying we care about this, but you're right. still also maintaining that control of where you're funneling people. So if you can't necessarily funnel them to more original content, at least the next few suggested videos still are relating to you and your brand. Right, 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 right. It's, it's yes, it's, it's yeah, that, that's great because it gives you, that gives you a, you know, a plans in terms of 1A and 1B. Like yeah. it's not just that one thing you can keep growing regardless. Oh, that, that's super helpful, Noel. That's great. I feel like a lot of these tools, um, especially the last two that I'm thinking of, um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I think people lose sight of there's all this flash and stuff and we want to be, you know, uh, I don't know. Yeah, you want to be viral. But mm-hmm. uh, the other thing that's important that people overlook is the value of that information and how that information is being like digested mm-hmm. and displayed and perceived. Okay. Um, so these next two uh, kind of examples, or the last two examples, are more, it, it seems almost like clerical work in a way okay. at times, but okay. um, what you're saying to YouTube and, and these search engines is you're saying, look, the valuable information in this video is, is important enough and, and is referenced enough that it is important to um, do these last couple of things. The first being, um, this is something we do with uh, Bilal's Q and A videos, oh, um, okay. is time code bookmarks. Oh. So this is super easy. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
So a Q&A mm -hmm. is, is a really easy example of that because basically what you're doing is you're giving bookmarks to people because if you have a 10 minute video, you don't have these mm -hmm. bookmarks, people get overwhelmed and they're like, I don't know what to do with all of this information. <laughs> I you know? certainly got that myself, <laughs> yes. <laughs> And it's like, especially if there's not a whole lot of visual content or there's a lot of talking head stuff, you know, you could lose people very easily. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, in order to, what you really want to do, this is why watch time is far more important, or at least getting people into the video and stepping in is more important than just ticking off views because mm -hmm. the more you retain your audience, the more valuable you are being perceived as by YouTube. So if you can get somebody to click over to these questions, let's say, you know, like the questions are, the first one's about workers' comp, the next one's about an accident, the next one's about, you know, employment law. And, you know, if someone pops into the Q&A and they see all this, you know, if they can look and see all the, the different topics, they can jump to, you know, when I was just in a car accident, and they don't have to sit through the three workers' comp questions right. um, to get to that valuable information so you're not losing people right off the bat. Mm -hmm. um, and this can go for other things, you know, if you're doing a tutorial, you're doing a walkthrough, you know, there are certain skill levels where people, yeah, I think this pertains more maybe to like a lot of our SEO stuff. Um, okay. But when you're dealing with a certain skill level, there are people who, you know, might want to skip through the first three steps. So in order to keep that retention and keep them engaged in your video, instead of clicking away, give them that, uh, that short attention span that I want to just, you know, screw the intro, I've already installed the software, put me on step eight, you can do that. And you don't, you know, you, you always want to cut down the risk of people clicking away. Right, right. And it's, it, no, it's, it's great that you said that, because I was struck by, you know, at the start of this, that particular section, when you said like, ah, people tend to look at this as clerical work. And that's certainly true. But another way to look at that is, it's one more thing that you can control. It's something yes. that you're not just out hoping that, you know, uh, 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 that the algorithm, that, that, that the YouTube deities will look fondly upon you. It is one more thing that you actually have some say in, some way you can better your company in how it's seen by others. So it's all these little things that may seem clerical, are, are they're really opportunities. They are, are one more thing that you can actually take charge of without being at the mercy of something or someone else. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of these things and a lot of these platforms where, you know, there is so many things that you can't control or you can't measure that, you know, all these little tools, while they may seem overwhelming at first, it really is just more opportunities to put yourself in control um, right. and to, to add that value because the other two things you're doing is, first of all, mm -hmm. this is where you plug your keywords. So these topics, what you want to prove to these search engines is you want to relate yourself to these keywords that you want to rank in in a way that proves that you have something to offer. Right. Um, so if you could have a time code that says click to click here for the information about, you know, digital marketing, you know, lessons or whatever, it's not a real keyword, <laughs> right. but, you know. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> right. but some, exactly, but something that shows like, oh, there's going to be real education here and not someone else selling a, an online course. Like Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, all the, all the search engines are trying to do, you know, as a side is they want to direct their users to the most useful information because the more efficiently they can do that, the more they can retain people on their platform. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. So you're really just trying to to prove, you know, it really is. It's like a, almost like a bibliography you're putting in your your description. Right. If any, or table of contents, like, hey, click to this, yes. you know. But it's, but again, that same kind of thing where you're like, okay, I'm looking at that. I'm gonna, that's gonna make me more likely to uh, 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 click on that, to listen to it, to watch it, and and if they see it once, then that means you've got a chance to bring them back too. So that, you know, it's, 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 yeah, I mean, everything Noel's telling you here is making it that much easier for people to find your, to, to come check out your business. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, the last piece is similar, um, especially because I think it, it really helps with keywords. Um, mm -hmm. This is probably the most boring one, which is why I stuffed it in at the end. That's <laughs> but, fine. Uh, yeah. People overlook closed captioning a lot. Um, oh, right. Yeah, and so mm -hmm. something like this is difficult to close caption. You know, it, it, mm -hmm. it's because we are so, we're improving off the cuff, you know, we're really just kind of having a mm -hmm. conversation. Um, and so for something like this, potentially you could, you know, hire somebody to transcribe it. But um, the videos in particular I'm thinking of um, is, uh, you know, the kind of things where we'll have you narrate or we'll have a cat on screen talking and we know that I've handed you a script and sent it to you and mm -hmm. you're pretty much reading off of that. Mm -hmm. 
if you can take that and create a, a subtitles file, which is super easy, um, mm -hmm. and you put that in, um, mm -hmm. first of all, you, you eliminate the risk of YouTube misinterpreting your words through whatever oh. pronunciation, because you know how you'll read the closed captioning and it's like, it doesn't make any sense, but that's not what they're saying. Mm -hmm. um, so and it gives you that opportunity as well to, um, to make sure your keywords are being picked up and your key phrases are being picked up in the way that you want them to be recognized. Um, and you're also, you're, you're once again saying to YouTube, hey, this information is so valuable and I think it is important that it is um, properly understood and, and perceived that I took the time to create a subtitle file and put it in. And all you have to do mm -hmm. is, uh, it's like notepad on the PC, I'm not sure what it is mm -hmm. on the Mac, um, mm -hmm. But you, all you got to do is, is instead of saving it as a text file, you save it under all files at dot SRT. I'll probably cut in a little visual here so that it makes a little more sense. But it's just it's mm -hmm. you basically just copy and paste and you create it and you upload it and you say without timing because you're not doing the down to the minute. Um, right. YouTube takes it and it just puts it on the video because YouTube. That's the other thing is if you use keywords in your video, mm -hmm. YouTube can hear that and it does you know uh -huh. it it does recognize what you're saying. Okay. Um, so use That's every great. minute and use every uh, every word of those closed captions because it's just adding to your authority. It adds, it adds the authority, and I'll I'll piggyback on that. Uh, going off of my own experience, it, having a closed caption just makes it more likely that people are going to watch. I mean, it's it's you know I I I not to pull rank, but I'm I'm a trained voice actor, and I absolutely watch the closed captioning. I mean, I rarely even if I'm narrating. Thing. If I'm going to see it later on, I'm just going to watch with the with the captioning. I mean, that's just you know, because you never know when someone's in public or if they have folks around them or something, you know. So it's it's it adds the authority and, and everything that Noel told you, and also it makes it more likely that someone's going to get through it. And that's partic that's such a good point you mentioned about the closed captioning helping to not mess up with some of the terms, particularly if you're in an industry where jargon. Is, is such an important part of what you do. I mean, we work with a lot of rehabs and a lot of attorneys, and these are very specific yet complicated words that really aren't used all that much in conversation. So just to help that be all the more precise is invaluable. Absolutely, yeah. Um, could not have said it better. Yeah, and what it is, it's just, it really is just, <laughs> but it really is just- I was, I was just going off of you. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't yeah. believe it. I was, I was following you. I thought. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but these last few things, especially down to the time codes and the and the captions, you know, it's kind of like doing the extra work on a college application that you don't necessarily have to. You know, you're getting their attention in a way that says, they're like, oh, okay, so you're serious. Let me take another, you know, let me more information for me to digest. More, and you and you're taking that time. Um, to do that extra file, it really is with, especially with the subtitles or, or the time codes with the keywords, it really is, do not let me be misunderstood. And if you're mm -hmm. establishing yourself as an authority, the more you can do that, the more you will be perceived by search engines as an authority. That makes so much sense. No, 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 that, that, that's all really great. And that's, and again, that's all stuff, you know, we talk about it in terms of clerical, we talk in terms of, I'll I, I take you what, an hour max, not even, to do all this stuff we're talking about here. I mean, just to make it that's, that's, you know, it's the kind of thing you could do on lunch break over a couple of days. I mean, then this is all, you know, and you can reap the benefits from this for uh, a long time to come. Absolutely. Especially if you do it consistently and you keep that mm -hmm. up and you, and you keep, you know, uh, if you maintain that same level of care with all of the work that you're doing and all, and, and the way that you're packing in that information um, and really not just throwing stuff up there. Uh, it can only help you. It really can. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Well, sir, I mean, that was that was all incredibly helpful. Is there any uh, uh, last thoughts you want to leave the uh, folks with today, Noel? No, I think that uh, that might be it. If you take nothing I else away from that, you know. Well. Yeah. That was that was great. That's that's exactly, and that's the kind of thing you can start. As soon as you click X off of this, you can go get started and all that right there, folks at home. Although, uh. Might, maybe not too soon. Hopefully you have some kind of holiday break, so you're not working on this the entire time. But hopefully at some point, folks, you get to watch this and then uh, sit around. So, yes. So uh, on behalf of uh, Website Depot, uh, 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 thanks for coming out. Noel, always so good to have you. Eric, um, happy, Greg. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, yes. So uh, for Website Depot and myself, Greg Benevent, uh, take it easy. Have a good night.